But what I've been trying to do since I've been controller is uh, in, include that as part of our agenda. So we, we've done a few things from our policy uh, shop. We've been promoting green policies to help the state, help uh, the, the ways in which they can benefit from green purchasing, from uh, using alternative energy sources like solar. We did a report on how much municipalities that had gone to solar panels, how yes. much money they'd save. Oh, so kind of, yeah, kind yeah. of tr trying to drive the policy in the right direction. Through our audit function, that watchdog role, we're also incorporating now a green component in our audits. How are state and local governments complying with energy mm -hmm. requirements Good. and other environmental requirements? So that's an ongoing process that we're involved in. And then through our investments, we've set up a $500 million fund, a green strategic investment fund focused on green technologies, particularly clean technology with regard to energy. We'd love to see New York be an innovator in this area. The fund is not limited to investments within the state, but we'd like to see uh, as much as possible investments within our state so we could start to grow some of those green collar jobs as they're called within New York to help our economy and jobs. to help our yeah, yeah and to help our environment. I think it's the way of the future. You're certainly seeing from the federal government a lot of talk about putting more resources uh, you know in this area. So we're trying to pos position New York State as a leader. It's good it's good dollars sense. It's also good you know public health sense in terms of the quality of the environment. So uh, every agency, you know, needs to contribute to, right. to this agenda, and we're, we're pleased right. to be a part of that. And the young generations coming up are very aware of it. They've been hearing recycle and yeah. green, and so it's it's terrific. Uh, I know each of us of us in our offices try to address it, even on a day to day basis. We did simple things. That we we you know we're encouraging people to, in our office to change their settings on the copying machines to two sided copying, right, and to use. You know, mugs rather than right. disposable, right. you know, cups. I mean, and those little things, you know, really do add up, and yeah. we shouldn't minimize them. I think sometimes people feel, oh, it's really not going to make a difference. Well, those individual contributions, yeah. they, yeah, they accumulate, and it we has a big impact. We do it here. I would like to uh, say a quote that you gave at that chamber breakfast that we talked about in 2007. It was your hometown supporters that were there. And you said, all of you know who I am and what I stand for. And that made a difference to me. We all knew that you were talking about the negative comments and scrutiny from the former governor, Elliot Spitzer, at that time. Would you like to comment on that or on uh, Elliot Spitzer? Well, you know, certainly, uh, uh, you know, and, uh, all this time later, I, I can smile about it a little bit. Yeah. But at the time, yeah. it was a tough, you know, transition for me because I really felt I could contribute something as controller and. Uh, you know, I was, I was you know, really humbled when my colleagues who knew me so well, you know, chose me for this position. And, you know, what should have been a celebratory time was a, you know, a rather a tough time. time yes. and, and, you know, first of all, uh, you know, I, I meant it, and I always point this out, the people who knew me best, you know, certainly back home in my district where I've lived all my life and have been in public ser service for a long time, were all pulling for me, were all feeling for me, and, and certainly, you know, uh, supporting me. And that really got me through, because, you know, I think, you know, especially if you suddenly I'm thrust on a larger stage and people are only hearing negative things, you know, you right. begin to have your own, you know, doubts. But, and people but, gossip. Yeah, it, it's, <laughs> it, it, right? But knowing that I had that support meant, meant an awful lot to me and, and, and maintain my confidence. I said, you know what, Tom, this is a, a, you know, a historic opportunity for you. Make it uh, work and show that the people that have confidence in you weren't wrong and haven't misplaced that confidence. And, you know, I feel as, you know, as the time has gone on, uh, you know, that's, you know, that, that is what people know about me, and those earlier negative comments uh, have faded away. You know, the reality is, you know, uh, during those rest of the months so that the Governor Spitzer was governor, you know, he was saying positive things as well, and I appreciated right. that. It right. didn't get reported as widely as the yes. negative ones at the beginning. Yes. Uh, you know, so, you know, I, you know my feeling is, uh, you know, it was one of those un unfortunate battles, but that's what politics is, and, yeah. you know, I, I, I knew a long time ago if you're going to be in this business, it is a contact sport. But you know, at the end of the day, if you if you if you if you follow your heart and your head and and you're, and you're on the right track, you know it's going to work out. So so you know, I now more smile about that than uh, you know than anything else. But the support from from the people who knew me the best is really what maintained my confidence that I could do the job. I'll tell you, no one could even write a script for what has gone on. With well, New York <laughs> State, well, New York State <laughs> politics has been rather interesting. You need yes. the, and and the, and the players have been changing so regularly. But you know, that's or that's the, the nature of the stage. times, right? You know, so we just have to be sure have to be ready. To be ready, and those of us who are in the position of responsibility, however long we're going to be in it, 
you know, do it right, look out right. for the people's interests, especially in these challenging times. You know, it's not a time for theatrics and the usual political gridlock and right. personality battle. Let's stick, you know, to, to the task at hand. It is a tough time. There are painful choices. It's not going to be easy to get out of this. But, you know, the stakes are too high. We need to make government work at every level. What is the, uh, or are, the greatest challenges facing New York now? Well, I, in the short run, there's no doubt the, you know, the, the impact of the downturn from the economy of the recession, the impact that's having on state revenues, aligning our spending with our revenues. We haven't done that well in New York for a while, and now that we have this, you know, this recession, it's really hitting us hard. So making smarter choices about how we spend state resources and having everyone recognize we don't have the money that we'd like to have. We're going to have to lower our expectations about what state government is going to be able to do in the short run. Uh, and that means, you know, working with uh, the governor, working with the members of the legislature to make, to make the right choices in this very, very tough time and to bring our state through it in a way that we come up with a stronger financial position than we had going into this downturn. Not going to be easy, but that's really the greatest challenge. Well, let's take this from the state to the national level. This is an exciting time. Yeah. With all the financial crisis, this is an exciting time for our country politically. You were there at the beginning at the Democratic Convention. Yeah. You were a delegate. Yeah. Uh, you were blogging. I read some yes. of the blogs. I yeah, loved trying it. Trying to get into the modern era. Um, <laughs> what was it like at the convention? Well, I've, this is my uh, third or fourth convention now. And uh, fourth convention, third as a delegate. This one did feel a little different because you did get a sense that, um, you know, that, that history was in the making. Uh, you know, you, you, first of all, you got a sense that the Democrats might actually win for a change. The other conventions <laughs> tended not to produce a, you know, a victory. But um, also the enormity of the, of the challenges out there and the problems out there. And, uh, you know, I went as a delegate, pledged to Senator Clinton, you mm -hmm. know, uh, our New York senator. Uh, obviously, by the convention, that, that was not the direction it was going in. To watch that process, though, of the Democrats coming together, which is something Democrats don't always do so well, right. but to <laughs> see that, and I give Senator Clinton a lot of credit for this because she really, you know, uh, uh, was magnificent in, in, in what she said and how she helped uh, unite uh, the, the party. We really came out of Denver, uh, you know, prepared for the fall and uh, committed to electing Barack Obama president. And, you know, as you went into the fall and you saw the enthusiasm that his candidacy generated, in a real sense, that perhaps we, you know some of us didn't fully appreciate earlier on. This was historic, you know, yes. At, yes. at many levels, you know, many, and many levels, the yes. impact. And I saw it at the convention, Shirley. And we've talked about this before. It's so important for young people to care about politics and be involved. Mm -hmm. For too many years, they haven't been. Mm -hmm. This presidential campaign, this most recent one, engaged our youngest citizens in ways that we haven't seen since the 1960s. And I think that's going to have a lasting impact and a lasting benefit. And uh, uh, you know, so to be there and to seeing it all coming, to, uh, start to come together, and then you know, certainly to be part of the process in the fall, it, it was it was very exciting. And I I know Americans, whether they voted for Obama or not, are all pulling for him. We need him to succeed. I think he comes in with a tremendous amount of goodwill, and people saying, you know what, we're, we're pulling for you. We're going to support you, and his willingness to think big, you know, bold, big, out of the box. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's the leadership we absolutely need. He's putting together a great team mm -hmm. to work with him, including Hillary Clinton. We'll yes. miss her as senator, yes. but she's oh, going to be in a she, yes. pivotal role, yes. you know, Secretary of State. So I'm, uh, in spite of all the troubles, I'm optimistic as oh. to where this country's oh, yeah. headed. Oh, I think so. You know, Tom, since 1984, you have been a supporter of public access television, always making time to do a program to keep your community informed about what's been going on. And I know I can speak for all the public access centers in New York State. We are so pleased that someone who is a supporter of community access and all the First Amendment aspects of community access TV is our New York State controller. Um, and maybe you will come back again and keep be us. Happy to. Okay. And I just thank you and your colleagues for doing a great job. What I say before about what we're trying to, you know, information is power, and community yes. access empowers individuals and communities yes. to be informed and therefore to be involved in a positive way. So I'm, I'm just so proud of your continued success. Oh, thank you. You know, as we come to the end of our program, I would just like to repeat a quote from the former U.S. Republican senator from New York, Alphonse D'Amato, big character here, uh, you know, on Long Island, but I, I think nationally everybody knows him too. And this is what he said about you. There's not a better person in public service, 
and not a person with a better heart and soul than Tom DiNapoli. He is the sort of public servant this state and nation need more of. Here in Great Neck and Manhasset, we know that very well. And now the residents of New York State get to see this firsthand. I would like to thank you for coming to PATV. I know you've already promised you'll come back. Sure. So thank you, thank Shirley. You. Thank, thank you, you very much. I want to thank our audience to tuning into our PATV channel, Cablevision Channel 20, and Verizon Channel 37. For more information on how you can get involved with PATV, please check uh, the information at the end of this program. I'm Shirley Bruno for PATV.